Well, hey, guys, it's been quite a while. Uh, those of you that know what happened, I'm not going to get into it. Just sitting about that. I wanted to do a new show today, bring some new content content to you guys. And the topic that I chose is probably going to blow up the Internet. <laughs> today, we're going to revisit Grounding My Shack. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Hey guys, welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL and I run the Ham Radio for Non-Techies YouTube channel and website. Remember to go to the website because that is becoming quickly the number one resource for ham operators around the world who need references for all kinds of stuff. So be sure to go check out the website. Keep those visits coming in. Send in your suggestions and all, all that good stuff. I want to take a quick minute, though, to also thank all of my Pat Patreon supporters. If you are a Patreon supporter and have been supporting the channel for a while, I greatly appreciate it. You have no idea how much that has helped me out, especially in the past couple of months. And uh, I, can, I, I, I continue to ask you guys to uh, continue supporting the channel. If you are not a Patreon supporter, please consider doing that by going to patreon.com forward slash hr4nt. So with that being said, let's get back to the show here. So, like I said, I uh, I did the grounding a while back, and you know I was trying to do the best I could with the information that I had. You know, this this is ham radio has been a very technical uh, interest of mine, and it is just in general. But there were things that I wanted to learn at the time. I had limited resources, or I couldn't understand what I was being told, so I was doing the best I could. So I went out there and I drove in some some uh, ground rods and ran my my grounding and stuff like that. And like I said, I caught a lot of crap from some people about how I did this wrong, and I'm violating this code, and this and that, and blah, 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 and you should have done this, shoulda, 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 woulda, coulda. Well, a viewer was kind enough to email me the other day, and he said, hey, I saw your grounding video, and I also found this article that I think might interest you. And I am completely blown away by what I read. And it's basically, it's called Station Grounding, Will We Ever Be Able to Dispel the Myths? And it's a really, really good article. And I will post a link to that article uh, down below where you can download the PDF file or I'll have it over at the website. And uh, you can download it from there to take a look at it and read it in its entirety. It's about uh, five pages. But the argument that he has there is that, uh, you know, we overthink this grounding thing. You know, it's not worth getting into arguments and overthinking it and freaking out and stressing out about it. I want to go get on my radio. I don't give a crap about the grounding issue right now, especially with the points that he makes in this article. So let's go downstairs. I'm going to show you my setup and what I did and why I did what I did. And then we'll come back up here and we'll go through this article a little bit more and finish up. All right, guys, so we're now back downstairs on the other side of my shack where I've got all my coax and my grounding coming in. So I want to kind of show you just a recap of what we originally did or what I originally did to ground my shack in that first video from about a year or two ago. So if we pop over here, you'll see there's my famous window pass through that a lot of you have made, which I highly appreciate. Hope it's working out for you. But you see how I originally had my grounding right here. And the ground went down to this ground rod down here. Okay, so with that being said, I caught a lot of flack from a, quite a few people about how, oh, you're breaking electrical code, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Well, let me show you, if I was going to put the ground rod the way everybody suggested that I do it, let me show you what I had to go through to get to that point. Let's just go back to the front camera again. So I would have to run that wire through the fence all the way around here around the corner across a rear doorway behind the AC unit and over here to where my breaker box is and the ground rod for the entire house is down there so with that being said that wasn't going to happen one, because I read a lot of things when I was studying for my ham, my ham license originally 
about how you don't make right angles with ground rods and ground wires and this and that and blah 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 yes is this supposed to be over here I'm sure but it wasn't convenient and it wasn't gonna happen so I did the best I could with what I had at the time well now my thoughts are this I'm sorry about the AC noise it's like hundred and three degrees out here today my thoughts are this now I'm not gonna worry about this I'm not gonna worry about grounding my shack and I'll tell you why I think it's unnecessary because I'm only doing it to protect myself from storms and and surges and things like that but whenever a storm is approaching I unplug everything I go inside the shack on the other side of this window pass through and I white I, I disconnect both coaxes for the VHF antenna and the HF antenna as well as the ground and I unplug my power supply from the surge protector that is supposed to protect it from any surges throughout the house so in the event of any storm I'm unplugging everything anyway if I don't use my equipment for an extended period of time I have it unplugged I don't there's no reason for me to keep it in there just in case I'm away from the home which would be my luck I'd be away from home and a storm would hit and lightning would just happen to strike my house now another point I want to make is if you are grounding for protection if lightning strikes your antenna or lightning strikes your house or anywhere nearby all the grounds and lightning arresters in the world is not going to save you okay a direct a direct hit's going to fry everything so all this grounding and stuff and, and worrying about it, overthinking it and freaking out about it and 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 uh arguing about it to me i think is useless so for those of you that do ground i'm not saying don't but we're gonna go back upstairs refer back to this article because there were some really good points that they made in this article about not worrying about grounding your shack and uh, I think it's no I think it's worthy to note to make sure that you don't end up overthinking it to the point where you don't get to enjoy radio because you're too worried about whether you got it grounded right or if you're gonna blow this you're gonna screw up that I think it's all unnecessary if you have it great if you're happy with it great but for what my my needs, my purposes, and in 2023, I don't think it's worth it right now. So let's head back upstairs. We're going to uh, talk about this article here, and uh, I'll have links to that also down below, and we'll complete the uh, the show here. Okay, so we're back upstairs now, and I showed you guys what I did downstairs, why I made the decision that I made, kind of. Um, I want to go over some of the, the key points in this article that uh, he talks about and that made me decide to just give up on the whole overthinking my grounding. All right. I don't care anymore. It doesn't make that much of a difference to me because of what I told you guys downstairs. If a storm's coming, I unplug everything. My stuff is safe. It's not going to happen. If, it, if, if I'm home operating, I see a, a cloud go over that might be lightning or something. I stop everything and turn everything off and unplug it. So for me, grounding to the nth degree and going through all that stress and bs of how to run copper wire and i showed you guys i can't be going around corners and i'm sure as heck not going to go across one of my doorways with a copper wire just to have it be at the main at the main ground under my uh my my, my breaker box so um for those of you if you've never worked on like computers i, I was in computer industry for 35 years i built more computers than you've probably ever seen and when we were working on computers, we had a ground strap that would be around your wrist and it'd be attached to some metal portion of a desk or some other kind of grounding pad uh, in your in your uh, workshop. And that was to keep you from having static electricity, from actually touching electric parts and blah, 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 because so you, you're, you're holding motherboards and video cards, and other components that have exposed chips and things and a little bit of static could completely fry it. So that's considered to be what's called a safety ground. I have that. If you guys remember the video, the very first video, I have strapping cables coming off of my different components going down to a copper bar that is mounted below my desk and everything's screwed onto that. That's just fine. It's It, it just cuts out the static parts and everything's peachy. So I've got that part covered. I think that's where I'm going to stop it because there's no use me running another copper wire from that copper bar up my window pass through then on the other side, right from the window pass through down to that grounding rod for the reasons I've already kind of explained that it's not really necessary. Um, RF ground is not needed. You know, again, if 
lightning directly hits anything in my house, it's pretty much SOL at that point. So I'm not overly worried about that. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, grounding grounding your chassis does nothing to protect you from lightning. So even though you have that little chassis screw on the back end and this and that, um, you most houses now have three wire grounded outlets. So that's kind of that kind of helps out with some other stuff. But again, I unplug all that if there's something's coming. And uh, what I currently have with my old setup was considered a daisy chain grounding system, which is not necessarily a good idea. So the point, some of the points he was making in the video or in, in the article was that, you know, back when radios were, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, when you had radios, maybe even the 70s, radios didn't have, a, a lot of them didn't come with any kind of a grounding thing. You plug the damn thing in and it worked, you know, and you, uh, you took precautions as you see fit. But now... In the modern day, with the new modern components that we have, the technology that's available to us, the stuff that they had to deal with back then, we don't really have to, I mean, as far as components go, we don't have to deal with anymore. So I think it's just unnecessary, even though most of your components do come with a grounding thing in the back. I think it's unnecessary to do that. And this, and this, this uh, article really convinced me of that. So, you know, again, if you have all your stuff grounded, you're hardcore against not having anything grounded, fine. I'm not arguing the point. I'm, I'm not telling people not to ground your stuff. I'm just saying, think about the alternatives here. You don't necessarily, it's, it's, it's not worth stressing yourself out about. And I'd rather go off and enjoy radio and go play radio and do all my things, my FT8 and my other digital modes and you know, parks on the air. Oh, that's the other thing. If I go do parks on the air, I'm not grounding my station out there. I'm not grounding anything. The, the, the antenna's plugged into my coax, it's plugged into my radio, and I'm talking, I'm on the air. If it starts raining, I shut everything down. So I've never had in the years that I've been a ham so far any issues with any kind of electrical disturbances or things that have caused or threatened my gear because I take the proper precautions. Is it inconvenient to unplug everything and plug it back in? Sure. Well, would you rather do that or would you rather shell out three or four thousand dollars because you couldn't get off your butt to unplug something real quick because you're gonna trust your grounding? You know, I, I don't, and I don't even care if you got insurance. Don't even talk to me about insurance with, 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 with the recent things that have happened to me. And I'm still fighting insurance companies to get paid for the stuff that I'm due. Nah, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't want to hear about insurance. Uh, so my point is check out this article, draw your conclusions and hey, comment down below. Let's have an open discussion about this. I'm not worried about, uh, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly here. I get that all the time. I'm a YouTuber. It just happens but I'm willing to at least discuss your point of view on it and see what you think. You know, can you change my mind? Can you tell me that there's a reason why I should have everything grounded? Cause I don't see it with the techniques that I, or with the, the method of operation that I utilize in my personal shack, there's no need for me to have all this grounding stuff on, on my, on my, uh, on my shack. So see what you think. And I, uh, I hope that uh, we can uh, come to some sort of a, a mutual am amicable agreement. <laughs> Uh, anyway, guys, with that being said, don't forget also, I do have a store if you want to pick up some ham radio for non-techies, t-shirts, mugs. I think I got aprons and stickers and all kinds of stuff on there. If you want that, you can go to hamradiofornontechies.com and check out the store. Also, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm show my video to more people that are interested in ham radio topics, and it really helps out the channel. If you're not a subscriber... Let's go through all this real quick. I know still I got 67 to 77% of you that watch my videos, but you don't subscribe. It's not that hard. It's absolutely free. Click down below, click subscribe, click the little bell to be notified when I do new videos, and you're ready to roll. When I pop out a new video, you get a notification. Hey, Scott's got a new video out, and you get to come and enjoy and come hang out with me. So with that being said, guys, I hope I help, hope this video was helpful to you. I hope that uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I ticked off somebody. And that's fine. Um, again, you got to do what is best for your situation. If you feel like grounding everything, it's going to make you feel better about yourself at night. Go for it. Uh, if you don't want to ground, again, use common sense. Don't chance anything with your radios. You know, replacing a radio these days is really expensive. They're still, you know, they're getting kind of scarce here and there. The, the supply chains are kind of coming up and coming or going up and going down a little bit. But I noticed the prices of things. What I paid for my 7,300 is nothing close to what they're charging for them right now. 
So I'm going to protect my investments as much as I can. And I, uh, I think I found the way. Anyway, guys, this is Hamreader for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL, and we are clear.